so you want some tips to get better at PvP. Alright then, so this video is going to be broken up into two different parts. Part one being the build setup, and the second part being the invasion combat level. Now take note, this is for invasions around the 120 area. So to kick us off, we've got build setup tip number one, which will be health. Now, what I want you to do, head over to Mrs. Conehead, redo your build, spam 60 points into Vigor. I mean, just smash the ever-loving f*** out of that Vigor button. Every single build that you do needs health. But wait! There's more! And then, after you have 60 points in Vigor, I want you to grab both of these talismans. You can do with just one, I'll forgive you for that, but preferably you want both of them on your build. Tip number two, low poise and high poise armor sets. If you want to run low poise armor and do consistently well, you're going to need longer reaching weapons that do a lot of poise damage. So great swords, dual great spears, pretty sure you get the picture. This will allow you to level the playing field with higher poised up people. Moving on from there, my preferred method for invasions is high end poise armor sets. Now here's a cheat sheet. I found this online. The link to it will be in the description. This tells you all the weapon poise breakpoints. Now, if you're an idiot like me and you can't read or don't want to read, I got you. Don't worry. What's up, guys? Chase the Bro here. Hey, that's pretty good. So as you can see, the legend himself, Chase the Bro, floats around the 62-ish poise range. So as long as you're hitting this or higher, you should be good to go. Higher end poise is going to allow you to trade with people, meaning more chances to get damage off, and allowing you to be able to pressure more when you need to. Also, heavy armor generally means more physical damage negation, which means you can take more hits. And lord knows, we need it in this game. Tip number three. Soft caps. You have to know your soft caps. Here, I pulled up another cheat sheet. Go ahead, pause it, read it. Usually, you're going to know what type of build you're going to be doing, whether it's strength, dex, quality, split, any of that. And once you get the requirements for the weapon that you want to use, it is good to know where your soft cap is for that attribute so you don't dunk all your points into it like a madman. Also, a tip within a tip. Once you get your build set up, you got your armor, your weapons, blah, 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 blah. Look at your weight ratio, the number on the left side. Divide it by 0.7. Whatever number that comes out to be is the least amount of endurance you need to not fat roll. So let's recap. You need at least 60 health with one or both of the talismans that I recommended. Low poise builds needs weapons with high poise damage. Higher poise armors are preferred and have better damage negation and you need to know your soft caps. Next up, we have the combat tips. Now, tip number one is patience. So there is no need to push two or three people as soon as you invade a world. Stay back, analyze the situation, what type of players they are, what type of weapons they're using, and if possible, what type of Asha Wars are on those weapons. Then, once you are comfortable enough to engage them, still let them come to you, punish their mistakes, and if you get one person low enough, then you can pressure. Do not be afraid to take a hit to confirm a kill. It will save you in the long run. Tip number two, terrain and enemies. You have to know the location of where you're invading, where enemies are, and the choke points. That way you can try to bait the host and his little band of misfits into them to get some damage. Use the terrain and use the enemies to split up the party and get damage and potentially kills where you can. Tip number three, spacing, delaying, and hyper armor. Now this is a big one, I know. Uh, let's unpack this, let's start off with spacing. Now this, this one will come with practice, you're not gonna get this right off the bat, but spacing is very vital to get damage in it at moments when you otherwise wouldn't. Let's take a look at this clip for an example. I knew he was gonna come in for a poke, so I pulled back on my analog stick while running to create enough space to dodge his poke and follow up with my own. Had I rolled into him, I would have never hit him because of the recovery delay. Moving on to delaying. Now, you don't always need to spam one hit after another. You can delay the next attack by simply just waiting an extra second and then tapping the attack button again 
This allows you to mix up your timing and catch someone who thought your attack chain was over. Last but not least, we have Hyper Armor. Now, delaying your attack chain will work with any weapon, but it shines with Hyper Armor. Hyper Armor gives you a small window of uninterruptibility on some weapon attacks in Ash of Wars. This can work really well with delaying your attack chains because it mixes up your timing and you can bait people into your attack just by delaying your attack a little bit and you also get the extra hyper armor just in case their attack goes through you will have the hyper armor to go through it and at least cause a trade tip number four is equipment preparation now this one is overlooked a lot but it, it is extremely useful pots meat dumplings throwing knives ballises all of these come in handy at some point or another you need to break someone's bubble use a throwing knife you need some extra healing a meat dumpling you need to heal yourself from just poisoning yourself from the meat dumpling have a neutralizing ballus all of these things can really give you an edge in invasions especially since the odds are already stacked against you on to tip number five is baiting now i know baiting is pretty self-explanatory but let's say you're getting ran down by a whole three stack or just two people it can be stressful and it can be scary but it can also be an opportunity for you to just completely press the delete button on whoever is closest to you if you have any quick ash of war that hits really hard let's say giant hunt or flaming strike you can absolutely decimate whoever is closest to you just by quickly turning around and pressing the ash of war button if you don't have any quick ash of wars you can always just turn and do a few light attacks before spam rolling your ass out of there Tip number six is to just stay calm. Once you get hit or take damage, it is instinct to just roll. Don't. You gotta break the habit. Practice your reaction rolling. Spamming the roll button is only going to lead to you getting more roll caught and ultimately death. Let's take the Ultra Great Sword poke, for example. A lot of people get caught by it. And it makes sense. It, it comes out fast. It has a lot of reach. Couple that with Elden Ring queuing up your movements, you can find yourself rolling right after taking a poke to the chest, even though you pressed the button 10 years ago. If you get hit, just keep your eyes on your opponent and roll when you see them attacking, not when you think they're going to attack. It will require patience, and it's a whole lot easier said than done, but it will save you from a roll catching hell. The last tip I have for you guys, now this isn't a build preparation tip, nor is it a combat tip, but it is time and practice. You're going to have to give yourself time and practice. Now, I wasn't initially going to put this tip in, but it is really important. But I, I would like to think that most people understand that they are going to have to practice and put time into the game if they want to get really good at it. That's just how it goes. I have been PvPing since dark souls 1 and i mean ps3 dark souls 1 game and now i know every single souls game is different they all have different tweaks and different mechanics but i've had that much time to get really comfortable with the play style that i have built for myself and i still get my ass beaten daily if you guys have watched my last invasion video i'm sure you've seen me get absolutely flawless in one of my invasions and sometimes that's just how it goes the pvp scene and most of the souls games have always been broken whether it was broken backstabs a broken power stancing weapon or a broken status effect there is there was always and will probably always be something extremely busted and broken in the souls game and it's just something you have to suck up and deal with or just don't play one last recap before we end the video invasion combat we went over patience let the enemy come to you terrain and enemies don't be afraid to run away and use the terrain and enemies to break the group up spacing delaying and hyper armor all key moves to help you in 1v1 1v2s and 1v3s equipment preparation you're already invading you're already at a disadvantage be prepared before you invade baiting a double-edged sword it can be risky practice your baits and you can get some nice clean damage especially when you're getting run down by a bigger group stay calm even if you get hit don't roll as soon as you take damage pay attention to your opponent and practice your reaction roll and last but not least give yourself time and enough practice with all these tips that i've given you and i promise you you will get better at invasions but i think that'll be about everything i hope you all enjoyed have a fantastic day